Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today it's time to get exceptionally subjective as we take on the topic of Devil Fruits from the perspective of my personal favorites. And I want to be clear right at the outset here, this is not a list examining the best Devil Fruits or the best Devil Fruit users. I already have videos examining both of those topics, links to which will be in the description if you're interested. However, this time around, we're just looking at what I like most. And that could be for any reason. It could have to do with how strong the ability is, how creatively we've seen it displayed, how aesthetically appealing it is, or any number of other reasons at my sole discretion. I suppose the one thing I will say is that every fruit on this list will be canon, because that's usually how we roll. Although I can't deny that the Goro Goro no Mi has a certain appeal about it. However, we must not be tempted by non-canon vixens. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to my top 10 favorite devil fruits in One Piece. Number 10, the Ito Ito no Mi. To begin this very subjective list, we have one of the craziest Paramecia types we've ever seen in the series that grants the user the ability to conjure and manipulate strings. And every time I describe this fruit, I go to myself, man, that sounds extremely underwhelming, but that just goes to show how simple concepts can be taken to extreme levels. I love everything about this fruit because not only is it incredibly powerful, but also greatly versatile, as demonstrated by its user in the series, Dolphamingo, who could seemingly do just about anything with string, whether it be control people like puppets, repair his internal organs, or even somehow create entire string clones of himself. And I must say that there's probably a lot of bias happening here because Dolphamingo is just flat out one of my favorite characters in the series, and he wields the Ito Ito no Mi with a certain sense of style and flair that I don't think many other users would be able to pull off. Plus, the fact that the Ito Ito no Mi's awakened powers were demonstrated probably doesn't hurt its ranking here either. So as a result, it is certainly one of my favorite Devil Fruits in the series. Number nine. The Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix. All right, next up is a fruit that skyrocketed to popularity the very second it was introduced in the series, and it's hard to argue against that, because becoming a phoenix is a pretty dope concept after all. What I personally love most about this fruit though is almost entirely aesthetic, especially as it was presented in the anime with the vibrant blue and yellow flame color scheme. It's a pretty fearsome sight, even if the flames themselves aren't capable of inflicting damage. However, to make up for that, the user of this fruit gains access to one of the most incredible healing abilities within the entirety of One Piece. And while these regenerative powers definitely do have a limit, they are exceptionally appealing to me, and plus they can also be used to heal others to a certain extent. Also, by virtue of transforming into a big old burb, you can also fly, and I think that Flight is a feature that is highly underrated because the world of One Piece is covered almost entirely in seawater, and so flight, you know, it's a pretty godlike power, especially when you're a Devil Fruit user. But even in the real world, the ability to become a phenomenal phoenix is a pretty desirable thing. I mean, if I was presented with this fruit, I would consume it without a second thought. Number eight. The Hito Hito no Mi Model Daibutsu. Keeping the mythical Zoan train going, here we have the ability to transform into a giant Buddha. Now, just like the Phoenix fruit, when I first laid eyes upon this power, I was simply stunned. Up until this arc in the series, Zoan fruits were pretty bland explorations of the animal kingdom, which had some great users and some not so great users. However, the power to turn into a golden giant and create devastating shockwaves really made people stand up and take Zoan fruit seriously again. Now, the reason why I prefer this fruit to the mythical Phoenix Zoan is purely because of the spectacle. It turns the user into a massive godlike figure and opens up the potential for some pretty fantastic action sequences, some of which we did see at the tail end of Marineford. Although one of the things I want most in this world is to see one of Sengoku's all out battles, whether it be in a flashback or taking place in modern day, because wielding this fruit, it would be a truly epic affair. So yeah, that's really all there is to it with this one. Another example of immense power combined with glorious visuals, and that amalgam is always going to hit me pretty damn hard. Number seven. The Hana Hana no Mi. Going in the complete opposite direction now, this is a fruit I love almost entirely because of its pure utility. The Hana Hana no Mi is without a doubt one of the most useful fruits for a more mundane daily life application. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in this world who would not benefit from being able to generate extra limbs on seemingly any surface, especially hands. In fact, when posed the question of what manga character he would like to be, Ichiro Oda himself stated that he would choose the user of this fruit, Nico Robin, so that he could sprout hands and draw manga 20 times as fast. But it works for pretty much any other person profession as well, from physical labor to data entry. And that's just considering the power of hands, because we must not forget that this fruit lets you sprout any part of your body, including creepy eyes, and it can be taken to the extent where you can produce full body clones. Plus, in the series itself, Robin's use of this fruit is like crafting a masterwork of art with every technique. 
The detail that goes into thinking about the infinite number of ways that even simple arms can join and form other objects or perhaps even come together and just create bigger arms is just astounding. And I think that one of the greatest shames of the series is that we don't get to see anywhere near enough of this ability. Number six, the Ope Ope no me. All right, so this fruit is simply ludicrous and I love it. I think that this fruit is incredibly conceptually rich and the idea of creating a room in which the user seems to have control of all matter inside is not just a plain cool idea, but it's also a fantastic restriction to place on an ability that could have very easily become overpowered. And I also very much like that the use of this fruit is tied directly to the drain of stamina and even life force from the user because it makes for some wonderful traumatic stakes. It means that for a user to extract the most potential from the fruit, then they need to be willing to risk everything and have a super solid drive behind their actions, which I find fascinating. I love the idea of a devil fruit that requires sacrifice for power rather than just granting someone something insane because they ate a piece of fruit one time. Plus the idea that a user of this fruit may be able to invoke the perpetual youth ability is endlessly fascinating. It's probably not a fruit I'd be wildly keen to consume myself, but it's definitely one of my favorites in the series because it's always fun to watch and useful in pretty much every conceivable situation. Number five. The here, here, no me. So everything in this world really boils down to two kinds of people, those that eat ice and those that don't. And I happen to be the former, so the here, here, no me immediately appeals to someone like me because of the infinite potential for adding ice to my various drinks. But seriously, this fruit is pretty absurdly cool. And I don't think I talk about it anywhere near enough on the channel, actually. I mean, even for Elogia, the power of this particular fruit is difficult to comprehend with techniques like Ice Age, which can near instantaneously freeze an entire stretch of ocean and have it be cold enough to last for an entire week before melting. And speaking of, another reason why it's quite a fun fruit is because it's one of the very few that can actually negate the natural weaknesses of becoming a devil fruit user by freezing sea water before you fall in and drown. So it's pretty conceptually appealing to me on that basis alone. However, I think what I really love about the fruit is that it's quite a unique logia as it actually turns the user into a tangible element. So when it comes to combat, they can still be hit and shattered, which makes for some pretty great sequences. Also, every use of this fruit in the series is drawn superbly by Iota, and yeah, just an incredibly big fan of this one. I would consume it without question. Number four, the Mochi Mochi no Mi. Next up is our first and only special Paramecia for this list, and let's be real, quite possibly the only special Paramecia that will ever be featured in the series. So the Mochi Mochi no Mi stands out immediately because it's a funky blend of a Paramecia and Logia, allowing the user not only to generate and control Mochi, but also allow them to change their body into it and manipulate it. And the result is essentially a superior version of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, a fruit that I do love, but not quite enough to put it on this list here today. Although I do have to admit that it's hard not to be a bit biased when talking about the Mochi Mochi no Mi in particular, because being wielded by Charlotte Katakuri is such a massive reason why I enjoy it so much, particularly in combination with his future sight, which allows him to sell the illusion of the fruit being a Logia. It's a perfect power for a perfect being, and I was consistently in awe of how Oda decided to implement its abilities in the series. Pretty amazing stuff, and I guess the only real shame is that we need to wait well over 800 chapters into the series before it makes an appearance. Number three. Kanjiro's, as of the time of this recording, unnamed devil fruit. Now, before I get this again in the comments, a lot of people always tried to tell me that Kanjiro and Kinemon are not devil fruit users, and their techniques are just a form of ninjutsu, like Raizo's powers, despite the fact that neither Kinemon nor Kanjiro are a ninja, but that doesn't matter because you're wrong. They are confirmed devil fruit users. And with that out of the way, Kanjiro's fruit power is like a dream come true. Being able to draw anything and bring it to life is one of those basic human fantasies. And I think what I really like about how it's used in the series is in deliberate combination with an artist who is, you know, less than fantastic at actually drawing. It creates a nice contrast because you'd expect this fruit to be wielded by a more, how shall we say, elegant creator. But as a result, it's always fun to see Kondro's poor attempts come to life and interact with the world around them. But really what it comes down to here is that this fruit is just one that I desperately want to use in real life. I feel like the ability to create literally anything is heavily underestimated in the fan base and one of the more unique powers ever showcased in the series. Number two, the Goro Goro no Mi. So I don't think I could have ever made a list like this and not include this fruit. And I suppose I should point out that earlier, I said that I liked the Ope Ope no Mi because its ridiculous power came with fantastic balance in terms of its cost. However, the Goro Goro no Mi abandons that idea entirely and pretty much just turns its user into an instant Thunder God. This existence is probably the most broken devil fruit ever created. And while something like that would usually annoy me from a narrative standpoint, it's just so awe-inspiring to watch in action. Plus, I do think that narratively it was put to good use, exploring the idea of 
false gods and faith during the Skypiea arc, and of course it's hard to deny the charm of its user, Gardenel. And of course in the case of which fruit I would personally like to consume, it's impossible to ignore this one. The power is just far too great to brush over, and its use is always aesthetically appealing in addition. I quite firmly believe that the Gora Goronomi is the best devil fruit in the series as a whole, even more so than my actual favourite fruit, which is still to come. Number 1. The Pika Pika no me. So another disclaimer before we get into this, yes I do think that the Gora Gora no me is better than this fruit, but I'm not going to go into that here, because we need to talk about Wondrous Light. This fruit immediately became my favourite from the moment it was introduced into the series, and hasn't ever come close to being knocked off the top by another since. A lot of this has to do with what I do in reality though, which is a career very much focused on the field of theatrical lighting, whether it be as a designer, programmer, or a technician. And so when I consider the thought of being able to create and manipulate light as a devil fruit ability, well that's game over. That is more or less the dream for me. And yes, it also helps that it's used in the series by Kizaru, a sharp looking tall gent with a stylish shoot, and a habit of talking exceptionally slowly, to contrast the speedy nature of light. But rather simply, that's all there is to it. I like exploring the possibilities of light, and the potential of being able to do so without stupidly expensive equipment is very much a plus, and makes the Pika Pika no Mi by far my favourite devil fruit. But that pretty much does it for my top 5 favourite devil fruits in the series. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel New World Review for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your favourite devil fruits in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.